Our adventure begins in Beijing with the package tours we had bought for $615 per person. The package included all meals, travel and tour guided trips from Beijing all the way down to Chongqing. But going what they call hard seat class on the train was a great adventure in itself with six small bunks crammed into each open cabin. But everybody was nice to us and the little cabin was spotlessly clean with pressed sheets and pillowcases. At one station I got to see the CRH bullet train easily capable of over 300 kilometers an hour. Yi Chang was warm and sunny when we arrived with a clear blue sky. The streets were wide, the city beautiful and clean, and the young people on the streets were fashionably dressed. The city had all the usual western outlets like McDonald's, KFC, pizza parlors, and even Adidas and a jewelry shop with music that filled the streets. It was air conditioned in the shopping mall nearby and super modern. We had some spare time so we decided to visit the Riverside Park to get our first look at the great Yangtze River. The park was quite long and followed the river with well cared for gardens and walking paths. We heard music drifting through the park and we followed it to find retired oldies enjoying their afternoon under the shade of the trees. After an enjoyable stroll, it was time to meet our driver who would take us to the cruise ship. We waited at the pickup point at Yiling Square in the city. The President Prime cruise ship was moored about 8 kilometers up the river outside the city of Yichang to avoid having to pass through the locks of the Yichang Dam. On board, a young lady at reception was a very enterprising salesperson and sold us on the idea of upgrading. She showed us four cabins, but the presidential suite for an extra $600 US was a once in a lifetime opportunity, and it proved to be worth every cent. The presidential suite was just magnificent, with a large lounge dining room, a bedroom, two bathrooms and a bath. But best of all, it included the whole bow deck for our exclusive use. After dinner and late into the evening as we retired to bed, we were still tied to the dock. The next morning we woke to see we had moved up river about 21 kilometers to a little place that was called in English the Three Gorges Village. On the shore side passengers poured off the cruise ship to do some sightseeing but on the other side the Yangtze River was busy with boat traffic passing constantly. Eventually we moved on and passed the perfectly organized little village designed just for tourists like us. About another 16 kilometers up the river we pulled up beside the President 3 at Sanduping village for a tour of the Three Gorges Dam complex. Buses waited to take us to the great reception hall for security checks. Just amazing! None of this was here 10 years ago.
On the way, we passed over the Lock Canal. Ten years ago, there was nothing here but a massive dirt trench. And where Lock 1 is today, there was just a concrete canyon. The dam itself is all but finished, but ten years ago it was just a mountain of concrete and cranes hidden in the mist. From the monument at the visitor centre, it is easy to see what an amazing feat of technology the dam represents. Now the whole complex is a perfectly managed, carefully manicured creation that even has outdoor escalators for its admiring tourists. Returning to the cruise ship at San Duping, we quickly stock up on cheap beer from the roadside vendors. The President Prime carefully manoeuvres across the river to enter the Lock Canal, and from our fortunate position at the bow, we have the perfect view. The area all around the river is quite beautiful, surrounded by misty mountains, but at the same time it's busy with industry all along the river shore and passing ships, mostly carrying soil to goodness knows where. At lock number one, it was very busy. We had to wait our turn for a couple of hours to get in. By the time we finished dinner, it was already dark. Moving into the lock in the dark was an airy feeling. Water splashed and swirled. Voices echoed round the cavernous walls. Anchoring chains in the sliding guides in the walls that secured the boat squealed and groaned as the water rose. By the time we entered the third lock, it was time to sleep, and the bed in the presidential suite was looking pretty good. Time for a bath, perhaps? No, no, too tired. By the time we woke next morning, we were already docked at Badong. I experienced a feeling of deja vu as we pulled away in our tour boat. I had seen this place before. The water was now much higher, but it was the same place. I was sure of that. And all the new buildings crammed together on the hillsides were new. There was nothing like this before. The tour boat was going to take us up the Shannon River to see the lesser gorges and ride a skiff with traditional naked trackers. Our tour guide minders chased us under cover as we passed under the bridge. Anything falling off would be fatal. We arrived at a transit barge where after some shopping we were carefully loaded onto skiffs. The story of the boat trackers is a story of strength, tenacity and courage. For a thousand years or more these supermen hauled goods up the river naked. Before the dam, the power of the water would tear any clothes from their bodies or drown them if they fell into the rapids. 
Our girl guide tried to teach us songs. It seems the boat trackers were also romantics, and many local songs were devised to sing messages across the gorges. Once again, we were sailing down the Yangtze to our next destination. Our next port of call was Fengdu, the city famous for ghosts. Fengdu's fame goes back over 2,000 years for its Chinese mythology, Buddhist shrines, demons and house of torture. In legend, through diligent observance of Taoist teachings, it is believed that some have achieved immortality on Ming Mountain, high above the city. But beware the temple of hell. It waits to condemn you if you cannot pass the three tests of the underworld. But the old Fengdu is truly a ghost city, and now deep down in a watery grave, under the keel of our cruise ship, and under the high water marker. Yet the spirits of Ming Mountain remain, in the city of ghosts, high above the water, torturing poor souls who fail the three tests. But some things still remain, and a ghostly dragon boat glides up and down the great Yangtze River, searching for the lost city of Fengdu. Later, we glide past the city of Wuxian, another new city that has mushroomed up to stand guard over the old city that is now deep under the moored cruise ships. The new Yangtze is alive with industry. We pass factories, warehouses, shipbuilding yards, and an endless stream of new bridges stitching North and South China together. The power of this river has to be seen to be believed. I'm intrigued by abrasive barges carrying red pontoons of sorts. Were they floating docks, ship decks, or perhaps even a footbridge? Turns out they were a bridge but much bigger than I expected. Yangtze river boats line up like a row of white swans. They seem to be waiting for something. Out of the mist looms another bridge and beyond it another riverside city, but this one is very impressive. The city of Fu Ling has been a historical marker in Chinese history going back long before the terracotta warriors of Xi'an and hundreds of years before the birth of Christ. Ten years ago it was still a quiet town of less than 200,000 people, but now the new Fu Ling is sprawled along its own great underwater wall for nearly five kilometers. Fuling is home to an archaeological site called the White Crane Ridge. The ridge has carvings of fish on it to indicate the water level changes in the Yangtze River over the last 1200 years. To preserve this priceless site from the rising water, an underwater museum was built to preserve the relics for prosperity and for tourists. Just another amazing feat of Chinese ingenuity and engineering. The final leg of our cruise to Chongqing is through the night, but in the morning it's foggy, too foggy to see much at all. The Chongqing municipality has a population of about 30 million, and it grows like bamboo. Constructions were going on even as we disembarked. New docks, bridges, overpass, highways, shopping malls, not to mention buildings everywhere. The Chongqing region is quickly growing to become one of the most important hubs in China and a very interesting place to visit as a tourist, but that's another story for another time. So thank you for watching my video. Bye-bye.